Our story begins on June 16, 1966, at Roxbury Patrick T. Campbell Junior High School. When angry shouts began erupting from the auditorium, A foul enemy of ours has been brought into this place, shouted the Reverend Virgil Wood, Boston representative of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He shouted, If this were a synagogue, would you have invited Adolf Hitler? No, roared the audience. Is Miss Hicks interested in our children? he asked. No, they shouted again. Miss Hicks sat there with a faint smile on her face, nor did her expression change when the audience and many of the 146 graduates began rhythmically chanting, Get out! Get out! Get out! Go home, Miss Hicks. Miss Hicks played a major role in resisting desegregation within the Boston public school system. Louise Day, married name Hicks, came from a wealthy and powerful family in South Boston. Her father became a special justice of the South Boston District Court and had an enormous influence on his daughter. Hicks attended law school at Boston University in 1952. Nine years later, Hicks announced her candidacy for Boston School Committee. When Hicks won the election, she did not try to resolve some of the tensions that had erupted in the Boston Public School District. Rather, her actions only escalated the tensions that were already in play. The tensions began early in the 1960s, when the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People stated that the Boston Public Schools were separated by what they called de facto segregation, and requested that the school board acknowledge this and take steps to resolve it. This type of segregation meant that the schools are not separated based on race, but because the school is in a certain neighborhood where there happens to be a majority of one race. Its counterpart, de jure segregation, is intentional segregation and imposed by law. Hicks originally made no comment on segregation in order to get elected, but once she won her candidacy, she refused to acknowledge that the schools were segregated at all. Even though the federal law states that there must be integration within public schools, Hicks fought hard to resist this. Hicks discovered that if she rejected the need to integrate schools, she became more popular within the white community and in the polls. Hicks used this to her advantage and campaigned using the slogan, You Know Where I Stand. Using this slogan allowed her to convey the platform of segregation which she was running on, without having to say it outright. Instead, she said that she was opposing integration for other reasons, such as the cost of busing. Hicks was not a racist, but she used the racism of the people of Boston to become popular and propel her politically. She was able to ride her popularity to be elected to the Boston City Council by an overwhelming majority. Hicks then became so popular that she became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives for Massachusetts' 9th District. This allowed her to have an even greater influence not only on the citizens of South Boston, but also fellow members in the House. At the time, Hicks stood in the way of racial progress, but it is unclear what she really believed. While in law school, she was very close friends with African-American women and was sympathetic towards the problems they faced. Despite her past sympathies, becoming part of the school committee was more important to Louise Hicks, so she remained a strong advocate against school integration and was determined to have the schools continue to be segregated. Because of this, Louise Day Hicks played a major role in the continued segregation of the Boston Public School District and escalated racial tensions within the Boston community.